So hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Beatrice Ajayi and I am an artist. And here on my channel, I like to create art and um, from different mediums. Um, and you can see some of my older videos, what kind of uh, medium, mediums that I've used. Um, and this little character I painted some time ago in one of my shorts um, here on my channel. So I thought I would start on this one today and try and add another layer to uh, this little character. So I'm filming with my phone here and I'm filming as well with you because I wanted to be visible in my videos these year, this year, um, a bit more personal. Um, I have been on YouTube for some years now and I haven't really been as visible as I'd like to be. So I'm trying to push into that new area this year um, and really refocus my efforts in how I'm sharing here. So yeah, um, let's see what colors I can add to this now. I've already got some orange. I'm gonna put some, yeah, I have some yellow. Actually, if it's white, I add some more white here. Um, I've been using this old chocolate um, kind of a box for my oil paints and it's quite good because I can kind of close it off and not be scared of um, smudging it and things so it's been quite useful um, but also um, it keeps them moist still as well um, because I'm using here uh, water um, soluble oil paint Let's see the green I like that green color and um, I decided to go back to using oil paints again after some while because I haven't really been experimenting as much with oil paints as I could. I usually use um, acrylic paint quite a lot. That's the main one that I use. Um, so I thought I should try actually going back to using oil paint because I actually enjoy using oil paint. Um, it gets me... I've tried that one of using the mediums in the acrylics. But when I'm using acrylics, for some reason, I really enjoy that quick um, dry aspect of it. So I feel that it's very useful as a tool that way, as a medium. But when I'm using um, the actual oil paints, I'm ready for that delicate, more kind of longer time to absorb what I'm doing kind of aspect. So I'm just going to start mixing some colors here and just get straight into it so you can see um, the difference by whenever we finish this. So yeah, I'm just really enjoying mixing my colors and having fun. I'm trying to decide what this background should be about for this character. What it's What's going on in the background would be really interesting. So I'm really having fun, taking my time um, I could move my, let's see, i move it here. No, I usually like, there's a, there's a way that we all like our setups when it comes to creating art. Um, I like mine to be on my right side so that I can then start um, adding and everything's on my right because I'm right-handed. So different people will have different ways that they do this. So my mouse... is supposed to be a white mouse. I, I like doing white mice actually quite a lot. Um, if you look through a lot of my different artwork, I do a lot of mice that are kind of, they look cute and innocent. Um, and then it's sad because then the rats are kind of given a bad rep, but all of them, to be honest, are, would be either just as cute or just as creepy. I mean, if they're not, you know, bathed and cleaned like the ones you get as pets, obviously that's going to be a whole different experience. But I like my animals so I don't mind either one. So, but I'm going to be going back and forth with color just seeing what I want. Playing around with it and if I don't like something. I kind of forget that it's oil paint I'm using sometimes. I just kind of work it almost the way the same way I would do with acrylics. I'm not scared to 
The difference is if I've done something and then the layers are all wet, I need to now wait for it to um, to dry before I add the next layer. So I'm getting used to really being patient when it comes to doing this. And, and being quite intuitive with my color mixing as well. So these are all the different things going on. It needs to be a bit lighter than I can. And all the time as I'm painting, I'm thinking about the story of the artwork. Um, who is this little character? What is he up to? Um, And I'm tempted to probably put something here as well. There's sometimes I end up thinking of ideas as I'm going along and I'm really tempted to put like a butterfly or a bee up here or something. I think a bee probably. Um, yeah. So I'll keep thinking about that as I'm going along. Just because I have all those yellows around and thinking the bee might play into that quite nicely. I'll see. I'll decide. Uh, So I can see if I can zoom in here a little bit for you to, not too far. I don't want to really move my um, character around too much because then it would interrupt what I'm doing. But yeah, this might be better seeing as I'm doing a face. So, and yeah, it's just really interesting because this techniques I've seen um, oil painters use before and I didn't really fully understand them. But basically what I'm seeing is that um, oil paint goes a long way. So using very little amounts of it to get that hint and suggestion of what you're trying to do is very important. Um, and then I'm thinking I want that a bit more orange in there. So I'm just going to get a little hint of orange into that. Let's see what colour comes out here in the mouth and the lips. There's areas sometimes I think which are just like really cute and I don't really want to interrupt what I've got but then it's like... There's so many colours you can introduce to a little character. It's a lot of fun. Just add in a lot more white and... So I think what I'm learning is that, yeah, I want the fur to be white, but it's going to be subtleties in it. Um, there's going to be a lot of light. Um, hints of colours in between other colours and all sorts of stuff coming in. And then I could, if I don't like that, I can push into that moving forward and change that another time. There's different ways to play with that. Um, and creating grays and things. Here, I'm wondering what to do with this ear here. So, might go in a bit more brown. Might need to make that a lot darker than it is. Just added some black and in with the brown and it's gotten really dark. Um, yeah, just different things I've been learning when it comes to oil paint about making sure that you mix your oil paint in the color that you're trying to get. And so you need to mix that um, quite well and not, not kind of be lazy with your mixing because then your colors won't be either sustained or true or all sorts of things really. Um, other things are like when you're using color is to, if you're going to use for example a red and, and you want to get shadow area of a red, it's like do you want it warmer, do you want it cooler and then you kind of think of how you would um, 
what direction you would go when you're adding the next color over that and things like that so it's like sometimes what happens is I'm doing I'm painting something and the next thing I just think oh that might do with more yellow or maybe more green it just comes into my head and maybe it's because I have been painting that long I don't know why that happens but it's like there's a voice in my head that goes oh that needs a bit more blue that needs a bit more gray and all the different colors so I'm looking here at the shadows of this character at the moment and trying to think of what I want to add to it I'm just going to wash some of this well, wash my brush off and I might do some I think on his outfit I really want to do something in the background though hmm tempted right so the background's quite busy and I'm thinking that I am going to oh, this keeps rolling off um I'm going to do something with that background I'm trying to think what to do I wanted my bee though what I could do is do the bee see how it goes and then so this bee you need to understand I am going to be doing a stylized bee like the ones I do. I'm going to be brave and just use black straight away here. Black would probably be the last, one of the last colors, so maybe I shouldn't. Hmm. I'm trying to think of how to make it stand out. Let's try a bunch of really bright colors and see what happens first. And work on top of that. So always thinking about how to carry the colors across when I'm doing things. So, right, okay, let's see. So yeah, this might not look like any bee that you've thought about before, but yeah, this is how I roll. So some legs sticking down. And then just clean that off. And then I might use some of this blue. And I really, I'm very, um, very random in my color decision making. Um, I don't really, it's usually just whatever is inspiring me. So I know that the bees are supposed to have yellow in them, don't worry, I'll come to that. But what I do is I just start introducing random colors into stuff. Um, with just very strange ideas. Um, I'm going to go into the orange next, I think. Let's add some orange and some white. Mm, that's kind of being tainted a little bit. My orange has been tainted by some red, so I'm going to add some yellow and mix that in. A lot of yellow because I want this to be kind of like an orange yellow. I'm trying to make sure I mix enough of this. This feels like it's still a bit more of a brown, but, but just slight introduction to its character. Then I'm just going to go straight into yellow and just dump that on. I'm slowly getting in some of that like, look. So I might leave that for now and then try and build around this character with this because I'm going to mix some hmm. This is a confusing bit. Let's just try it. Something very random. Mix some colors and see what happens. Like a really pale yellow, um, green around this guy. And then I can feed that to the rest of the painting. So, really light, but. Just to, so that you can see this little character, that's what my whole aim is here. Some of the colors are carrying through and I don't mind, I like that. So just around his nose. 
And what I do also sometimes is I carry the colors into the eye of my other main character. I'm just going to carry some of that green into his eye there. And this maybe a little bit in his ear just because. Go around and add some in other areas. And all that is just extra. But yeah, so going kind of like I'm scumbling because I'm keeping some of the colors underneath a little bit. So if I go out a little bit more, then you can maybe, let's see. I'm coming a little bit. And I'm just going to keep building this layer of this little bee. So anytime my characters are looking up like that, I always think I should add a little character there. And um, yeah, and then now I'm just kind of controlling this background because I don't like the busyness of it too much. I might bring that some of that element of the, you know, the kind of um, the block system just a little bit or let that just hint through the bottom, but not as the main thing because it's very distracting. So yeah, um, I love to paint um, and I encourage you to do the same because it's just um, telling stories for me is, is part of what the art creation process is as well. It's like, I create a little character and then I'm like, oh, I wonder where this little character lives. And it takes you somewhere else. It is basically like reading a storybook and it takes you somewhere else. It lets your mind wander and play and imagine. And I think overall we'll end up taking away the stress of life because People go through so many different things and I think having this creative element has helped me a lot in different kind of coping ways, probably generally through life. Um, but uh, And you don't have to be perfect at painting people or anything to be able to create something. Because um, a lot of people, when I tell them that I'm an artist, one of the things they say to me almost instantly every time is, oh, can you, you know, can you paint, would you be able to do a portrait portrait of them? Or they usually say, you know, because I would deliberately ask them, and what of yourself? Do you do anything creative? And because it doesn't have to be about painting. It can be dance. It can be singing music. It can be anything. Being creative can be anything because you can bring beauty in any area um, that other people will appreciate, will share, will, will be made happier just by knowing that something so beautiful is in the world. So it's not always just about painting because sometimes I think people focus on that and I don't, I don't think that's the right way to look at it. I need some more blue. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm just going to go back out here. So you can see how much I've put layer-wise going over this. I am running out of white. So. I'm mixing this quite, not as thin as I could have done. I um, have been using some mediums that can actually help this dry faster, but um, I've left that in the studio to come out here for some bright light, so I don't have that with me. So I'm just going to go with it. Um, this is fun being able to do this, and I've been meaning to do it for a while. Uh, yeah, so I want to be more present on YouTube. I want to be sharing more, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that for you. To make sure that you can actually, you know, I don't know, I can share things that I, I've learned 
if you have any questions about anything, any of the process you see, then I can let you know where I got either those items or where I got ideas for things. Yeah, just sharing. I think that's the main thing for me, sharing and encouraging others to also use their gifts in a creative sense. I mean, I like to do a lot of different things creatively. I like to sing, I like to write. And all of those things feed into what I'm doing here. So sometimes I might be singing and I think of a story, an idea, and then that gets replicated in my artwork. So it all kind of feed hand in hand, that creativity. Um, and you suddenly realize that in, in everyday life as well, you will become creative. So there's sometimes problem solving situations will come up and you'll be like, how am I going to resolve this? Um, what am I going to do about the situation? But if you use that creativity in that circumstance, you'll solve it in a way that you didn't imagine you could. So I think that our skills when it comes to being creative is useful in a whole range of ways. It's not just about painting or, you know, like doing what I'm doing right now. It's not only about that, there's more to it. So I decided to cover this whole background and keep it plainer, but I will always still come in and still add some other shadows and things. And I get asked a lot about how I add textures to things. So this is part of what happens. It's the layering. It's like you go over something and you go, right, okay, I'm gonna add another color. I'm gonna introduce a different stroke of the brush, a different use of a brush, a different, I might add a um, collage element, anything. I could do anything with this. So I'm trying to just, sometimes I'll try and make a decision for a color. And because I can't decide a color, I will work with other elements that I'm interested in. And then that will inform what I should do next. So for example, I've added this B because I just feel like it needed to be something here. This little character is interacting um, with someone else. Um, and I, I know the different characters I keep bringing back again in my artwork. If you look into some of them in the past, I always have bees. I love bees, as in the look of them. Um, I'm a bit scared of them still, even though I know they're not as scary as, they, as I thought they were when I was younger. But also, um, like these mice as well, because there's something about mice that I feel is still a bit mysterious as well. So they're always interacting. And there's different characters that I have through these things. And usually I do a lot of kids, children as well, characters, but I'm finding that the animals seem to be more of an endearing thing for any person that's viewing the work. Um, if I do kids, people usually are like, well, they're not children, so why should they buy a print? that has a child on it, I don't know, there's just this thing where it becomes quite restrictive for some people, unless it's in something illustrated like my books and things like that that I illustrate. But um, animals seem more accessible for people. So yeah, it's fun to do that. So here, what I was trying to say originally was to decide if I wanted to add more red into this mouse's um, outfit, I decided to do the background. So doing the background, has now informed me as to how to go about how much red to add to this because now I've added this kind of bluish green background so how much red am I going to come back into this and add so I'm just mixing some of the red and orange I have here might mix in some black in that and start somewhere so some red orange and red and orange it's kind of a crimson red. Um, what does it say on? Blue pyro red. And um, some of the orange I've got here. And then I've mixed in some black with that. And I'm gonna go to the bottom here of the mouse and start just adding another layer. So shadows. Um, uh, what I've been looking at. Here, this is back. I'm thinking about, I've thought before of actually cutting that hunch off, but for some reason, I've still left it. 
I don't know why. There's something about the hunch that feels like he's more endearing. Um, but yeah, I could cut him off, cut it off if I wanted, but I decided to leave that hunch. But yeah, so starting to add other colors and build in the shadow areas and what areas are not shadow and I've not really decided where the light is fully. I mean, this I can make lighter again and then the light would basically be on its face this way. That's what I'm imagining. So this area is going to be a lot darker. Um, so I've just plumped black straight on that. I'll take some of it off. That's too much. Um, and then mixing it in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some green as well. So look at that. That looks very dark now because of what I've just done. I'm just going to take some of that because I just like to play and mix in some greens in there and start putting some green on the floor here for the grass. It's always an outdoor experience with my characters. So he's sitting outside in grass. I'm just going to mix in some green. There's still my red and things on my actual brush. And I don't mind that. So mixing in the dark green in there with that black. Taking some of that off. I'm not cleaning my brush. Many others would. But I like the mix of colors. It doesn't have to be pure black. I'm going to go back in. Take some of this red and go back in here. Still going to mix some of that in here. So I am just... This layer is for me to play with. Because I'm just going to decide to do that. You can wipe it off if it's too much. Like this. I'll show you. I just get this and I just decide where I need to hold this correctly. Because I've painted some of it. And just wipe some off. Like really aggressively wipe that off. So you can see I've taken some off onto the tissue here. Um... So you can do that, you can wipe it off if you don't like that at that point in time, because it will take time to dry. So I'm going to wash my brush off so that I don't have that much of it on it. And clean it on my tissue. So this is me washing it off with water, my little container. Um, and then just drying off my brush. Um, right, what should I add next? So it's working in layers with oil paint. So once I've done whatever layers I'm doing here, then I'll just let it, you know, for some days to let that layer kind of settle down before I add other layers. So this is more of an orange layer I've added into this. Now let's see if I go closer. Yeah. So we can see that. So this, this is perfect because it's right in the middle of my face, just like that. It's really hard trying to figure out how you want to position a camera for filming. But I want to be able to show you what I'm doing and as I'm talking. So you can see a little bit of my environment and you can see me painting as well. So I'm just going to put as much as I can onto this character and then we'll come back to him another time. I like that pink, so there's a pinkishness going on in here as well. But we'll see what I carry through. It's just... But the more layering also, it's really interesting because the quality by the end when you finish is just something else. So I love this whole aspect of oil paint that you can add the color in and mix it on the actual... Um, canvas really easily and I just love that that's what I'm looking at when I'm now coming into my oil painting is the details like this that I can add to my painting so and I can always go back make this more red um, I can add some white if I wanted to make it more pinkish. So I'm always thinking about what I'm trying to do with my colors. Like here, 
For some reason, for the tummies, I always make them a bit lighter. I don't know why. And that is what's coming up in my head again, that I want to actually add something light there. So I'm going to go into the yellow and see if I can make this color lighter here without going to extreme, like into the pinks. So if I don't want it to be more pink, I'm adding the yellow so that I bring up more of the orange, which is because of this light aspect, is kind of saying that his tummy is a little bit round and it's facing the light. And so that is what we're seeing um, with this little uh, color variation. So that's coming up here. That is very subtle. Oh, maybe the next layer I add again, we'll do more of that. So the whole aspect of the light and bringing in dark areas. So I'm using some of the dark that I used back here to go over and over again just to get a darker area around here and I don't know if you can then see the emphasis I was given of the stomach um, of this area here and then because this would be in shadow this area I could still do that here just taking it on to that and just following up to this angle here. But um, another thing I want to say is the different mediums, they have different experience, experiential um, aspects to them, like the smoothness of being able to play with the paint like I'm doing right now is something you get with oil paint. You can do it with acrylic, you'd have a completely different effect because it would be the effect of um, uh, trying to blend and then at the same time it would be getting very dry very quickly. So the result would look different. Um, the mediums, you, if you practice a lot with the mediums, you can probably get the same exact effect. But um, initially it would look very different. You'd probably have to add quite a lot of different layers. So let's go back out a little bit more. So if you can see the shadow effect, I'm sure it's changed a lot since we started this as well. But I don't want this to go on too long. So I'm trying to think of at what point to stop. And it was basically to add another layer. That's what I'm trying to do. Add another layer and then you can see what I'm trying to get here. So as I said this is a lighter area you can see that already but I'm gonna make some more changes with another layer of more orange top. I added the yellow in there so the streaks of yellow coming out and I'm just rubbing that back in. Some of the black is still holding on to my brush but I don't mind and if I want it I'll touch into the yellow and keep adding it. Different artists paint in different ways, so it's by trial and error. Like this, there's all the techniques you can use, and then there's when you start actually painting, what you're inspired to do at that point is a completely different story. So, playing back and forth. Um, and trying to be subtle with the yellow. So going in and mixing it in. So the layer is getting kind of thicker and thicker. But yeah. going a little bit what I've done to the pocket here is I've just added some of the lighter yellow here and um, each time I 
add more color it gets lighter and lighter so I'm making it kind of dimensional for this pocket by each time I add another and then this and then blend in it as you go back that way So all sorts of things, adding colors in. And then if I fit twice, I just don't add. I just take it away if I don't like it. Let's see, or if I think I've put too much, I just go back in and actually I'm gonna add. So yeah, um, to make it lighter. This one here, this black, actually, I've not added some more to that to make it a bit more prominent. It's so much fun. It's unbelievable. And that's what I'm saying. Look at this. I'm completely forgetting I'm even <laughs> recording because I'm so absorbed with what I'm doing. I make this nose a little bit pokier. I put some more of the black here and the detail just keeps on getting better and better the more you do. Um, but yeah, I will come back to this next time and uh, look at all the extra layers that we've added and really build on that again. It's a lot of fun. So I encourage you to Spend your time as well and get some art done for yourself. Um, it's so much fun uh, to be able to create artwork. But you can see what we've done today. So I'll just go out a little bit um, and you can see the actual mouse process. It still has some more to do, like his tail. I can come into that, um, but so much fun. So I'll see you in the next one. I will continue painting this little guy and um, uh, if you have any questions like I've said um, go ahead and put them in the comments below also please subscribe because I've not mentioned that actually um, so that more people get opportunity to spend time with me because you know um, I'm fun and um, also to create art and, and enjoy and learn different things and illustrate their characters so um, I mean I just love it you just get ideas for stories from anything and you can just create anything and this little guy I was just like I'm gonna draw a mouse and he's just sitting and that was it and that's what's brought this little character to life um, so we'll build some more around his eyes and really emphasize so that you know his eyes is more prominent um, and yeah have fun with that so it's been great spending time with you um, please like this video as well so that um, I, I kind of like have a chance to share more with other people as I've said before and I, half the time I don't know what to say in this video so I have to be honest but um, I just want to share the art so uh, apart from sharing what I'm doing then hopefully you will be able to ask questions of me if you want about anything in particular I mean you can see my setup here um, beautiful isn't it it's just instagram worthy or pinterest worthy here but um yeah this is just the layout i put and it worked for me and i was able to show you this character close up and show myself for this year and going forward that's what i want to do so um i will see you in the next one so um thumbs up um and enjoy your week um and create something and i'll see you next time Thanks for joining me. Bye.